So today we are cooking in one of our BB2 Roman cooking jars. Um, these were very common jars that were found throughout Britain and have um, got residue from cooking um, often on the outside, perhaps where they've boiled over and um, up on the top of the rim here often. Um, so we're cooking something that is um, typically Roman, so we, we've done some research. So it's a beef stew, which is probably a bit high status for these pots, but never mind. Um, and we've got dates, honey, olive oil, some parsley, pepper. These kinds of things are going to go into it. To start with, I am warming my pot up. So what we want to do is we want to avoid thermal shock. Um, if we get thermal shock in our pots, they crack. So this one here is a, a nice fresh one. And um, if I hold it up, you should be able to hear a relatively, hopefully you can hear that, a tingy sound. That means that that, that jar is intact. This one, however, is one that I was probably a little bit aggressive with during the cooking process. So with this one, if you listen, you can hear a very dull sound. So that says that that one's cracked. So this one now will only be used for probably storing things in. I won't be using that one for cooking anymore um, because if you cook something beautiful and it cracks right at the end, you're going to be disappointed. So um, we're warming this pot to avoid the cracking, to avoid the thermal shock, so that when we get a little more heat into it, and I can feel that's quite hot already, when we get a bit more heat into it, the pot's not going to get a shock and it's going to still um, hold its um, form and not crack. Now the first of our ingredients to go in is going to be some olive oil. So just regular olive oil going into the pot now. And I'm going to try and move the pot a little bit into the heat to get some more of that heat into it. You need surprising, surprisingly a small amount of heat to get the, um, the desired effect. So you don't want to heat it too much. Um, just a small amount of heat will get your food cooking quite nicely. So I just want to even off the heat a little bit and move it in. It's still touchable um, up top here and the, the rim will heat up later, but it gets, um, it, it tends to remain fairly touchable throughout. We've also got to avoid getting ash into our food. We've got this little lid. Now, um, it's not common to find lids that actually fit with pots. Oh, got an eye full of smoke there. Um, so the, the lids tend to be quite generic. They tend to fit any pot. So that'll just help to avoid um, getting any ash in there. Um, the other benefit of having a lid that will fit any pot is if your pot breaks, um, your lid can still be used for a different pot. So it seems to, to be that that's what they did. They just had generic lids for pots as opposed to having lids that specifically fit a pot. Okay, I'm going to add my onions. So red onions are going in. Might use my hands. So these are just going to have a little sort of gentle frying in that oil before we add any of the other ingredients. I'm actually using here a, uh, I raided our seconds shelf, <laughs> and this is actually an oil lamp, but it was what I needed, so I'm using it for this now. So we have our onions cooking away. I'm gonna pop the lid on and just let them sweat gently away. Right, so the onions have been sweating away nicely. Hopefully you can hear that sizzle. Let's see if I can. So you can hear them sizzling in there nicely. I'm gonna add some of the meat now. So 
so this um, this part, this one here, it will be used as I'm using it for my spoon or for holding ingredients, so they, they don't become useless once they've broken. Oh, I am not used to the smoke in my eyes. There we are. I think I might need a bigger pot. <laughs> Never mind. Next to go in is a mixture of, it's parsley because it was meant to be lovage but we couldn't get lovage so it's um, parsley, toasted almonds, half a date and some black pepper that's gone into that. Now this um, should help to give the stew a nice thick sauce eventually. Again, the, the rim's staying quite relatively cool, so I can touch it for now. There we are. It's looking and smelling very good already. Uh, next, we have a bit of honey. Um, I'm, I'm not going to put the full amount of honey in. I, I think that Roman tastes were quite different to ours, so. I don't have a particularly sweet tooth so I'm trying to be a bit steady um, with the sweetness because it's just not my thing. balance the sweetness we've got some red wine vinegar so that should make the base of the sauce there we go and lastly some fish sauce so garum so we've got some fish sauce going in and later actually I'll be putting in a little bit of defrutum which is um, a grape juice syrup that I made um, earlier so I'll have to get that but I'll add that to taste because as I said I'm not particularly keen on very very sweet foods and that's it now the recipe says to cook this for three hours so we're just going to have this fire gently going throughout the day and hopefully by lunchtime we'll have some delicious Roman food but again we won't be we won't be adding we won't be, we're unlikely to get it any closer to the fire than that we'll come out and check it we'll pop the lid on and we'll just let it simmer and the key is not letting that pot get too close to the fire and warming it up before you start using it because if you just shove it straight into a very intense fire you will crack your pot and then you won't be able to use it again so um, we'll keep you posted on how it's going so whilst that cooks i'm going to talk briefly about how we prepare our pots before we cook in them so not the, the warming of them like i said earlier but how we pre-prepare them so that um, when we do cook with them that they're slightly more sealed than they would be when they first come out the kiln the pot itself is porous um, because it's not been glazed uh, generally roman pots weren't glazed there are a few examples um, where there's um, a glaze put onto them and there's a number of things with slip so like uh, Samian ware for instance or Barbatine ware they have a slip on them that gives them a sort of glaze effect but these ones were not um, they were mass produced a lot quicker and they didn't they didn't bother with any of that fanciness so for a pot like this to get it prepared what we do is we take it and we place it into a bucket or a large pan for 24 hours in water so we just let it sit in the water and absorb um, the water for 24 hours um, you can do it for longer 48 is fine as well um, and then once it's been sat there for the 24 hours we take it out we don't bother drying it um, and then we uh, rub oil 
on the internal surface mainly, but I do the external surface as well. So just some olive oil, you rub it round so the whole thing is coated. I tend to use a herb bunch, so rosemary or sage or something like that, just to help me move the oil around. But you can use a cloth, it's not, it's not essential. I just like the um, herby flavour that kind of is added to the pot. So it, it already starts to kind of develop flavours within it. And that's what people often claim is the best thing about cooking in ceramic pots, is they kind of absorb um, those flavours and those flavours seem to come out in future dishes. Um, so I'll rub it all over and I'll rub it on the outside as well. So the whole thing has been given a really good coating of oil. You don't want it um, sitting on the surface particularly, you just want to give it a good old coating. Then once it's um, coated, I then pop that into the oven and we leave it in the oven for maybe 20 minutes to half an hour just to heat through and um, on something like 180, 200 will be fine as well. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to essentially um, heat and burn the oil into the surface of the pot and it creates a slight um, waterproof layer to um, the pot by doing that um, and, and that's that's essentially it once we've done that which we've done with this one um, we will then um, use it to cook with this one that I have cooked with previously um, you can see compared to the others it develops a much stronger sheen there's a much stronger shine to this pot than there is um, to this one or that one um, and that is the the layers of oil have been developing on it as I've cooked with it um, so it's it's hard to, to know with the black burnished how much of the burnishing happened before it was cooked with and how much happened afterwards um, but yeah it gets a really beautiful sheen um, in fact I sh should probably have taken a photograph of this one before I cooked with it so we could compare but uh, there you go, preparing a pot is a really important stage. So the stew's been cooking now for probably about an hour. The fire has died back quite considerably, but it's still perfectly ample for what we require. I can just move my outer logs in just to push the fire a bit closer if I want a little more intense heat. It's actually smelling quite nice already. Let's see if I can get you a picture. And you can see even though it is cooking away um, I can still touch the rim of the um, and this this was on the fire I did get a bit steamed there but I can still touch the rim to to manipulate the pot but there we are um, I might have a little taste of it now see what it's like do I have a spoon I might have to just it's only Graham and I eating it so it should be all right mm, it is nice it's quite sour from the vinegar so the last ingredient I want to be adding is a defrutum which is a um, grape syrup so reduced grape juice so I made this last night just for ease um, for this recipe it was um, reduced by about half but I think some people will um, reduce it further and get more of a syrup we're not um, cooking specialists our main um, interest is the pottery but we, we like to kind of have a go at doing it properly as it were but uh, should you want recipes i would go elsewhere there are plenty of people online doing a great job of recipes um so i'm going to put a bit of that in give it a stir to taste it, it isn't as sweet as i thought it would be considering there's honey and dates in there um, yeah it's nice and the fish sauce gives it really nice um, saltiness it says to cook this recipe for three hours to get that um, beef nice and tender so we are going to leave it for a bit longer um, but I may have to add some water or something like that just to give it a bit of extra moisture but it's looking good so the stew's cooking beautifully um, and looking really delicious I thought I would quickly um, do a little bit of chat about what thermal shock is because I realize I'm talking about thermal shock but not saying what it is. So thermal shock is when a pot is heated very quickly or, or very quickly and very unevenly. So the the the, the vessel starts to expand but if, if it's done very quickly and very unevenly the expansion um, happens at different rates and therefore the, the pot will, will crack. There'll be tension within the pot and it'll crack causing the little fractures in the pot. Um, you can see, um, you might be able to see in this one, if I can hold it in the light, if I can get the angle right, um, you can just see um, a series of little cracks on this side. So what I've done with this one 
is I'd put it into the fire, um, this side facing into the fire where the cracks are, um, and it had he heated very, very quickly and very, very unevenly, and the tension just became too great and it fractured. This side was facing away from the fire, so it didn't, it didn't fracture, but that side will have been cold and the other side will have been hot. Um, and that is, is what thermal shock is. It's just when there's too much heat, too quickly, too fast, too unevenly, and it just causes that shock as, as the, the um, heat causes expansion in it just causes it to crack. So that is what we're trying to avoid when we're cooking with our pots. Um, I'll show you again how it's going. I think it's probably pretty close to being ready to eat. There we are. Again, I'm still, uh, still the rim's absolutely fine to touch still. So um, I, I reckon we don't need much more cooking than that. The fire has died right back, so it is just on a really gentle simmer at this stage. Um, so I, I will have to let you know how it is. We've got ourselves some nice bread, so we'll have that in a bit and let you know how it tastes. So we're ready to serve. We've got a hunk of bread to have with our stew and we're gonna serve up and taste. I think it looks good. The onions and the dates have kind of melted down into the sauce. So you've got what looks like quite a nice, delicious, rich stew. Uh, yeah. And the taste test. Mmm, it's nice. The meat's nice and tender. It's kind of sour, but with a kind of sweet undertone as well. So delicious. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to have a go at cooking this um, as well. And I'm going to show you in a minute how to clean your pot to make sure that um, you clean it correctly and don't end up with soapy, frothy, horrible food. When it comes to washing your pot, you can obviously use a modern scrub. Um, but if you want to be a little more authentic, um, you can use a piece of cloth and then sand. So the first thing I would do is just rinse it out, get the worst of the muck out of it, just with your hands. And then to get the rest of the residue out of it, you're going to take your cloth and you're dipping it in sand and it's it's the sand that acts as a scrub to get rid of any material and then go around the full surface of it. The place to pay particular attention to is up in this lip here because you can't see it. It can be neglected so I always give that a really good scrubbing. They come up fairly quickly and fairly well. What you definitely definitely do not want to do is to use soap do not use any kind of soap in your pot because what will happen is the next time you use it even if you rinse it as carefully as you can possibly be if you rinse it 10 times next time you cook with it the soap residue that's absorbed into the pot will come out and um, your stew or soup or whatever it is that you're cooking will start to froth and foam and you do not want that but with fairly little scrubbing. I've got rid of the most of the muck from the pot. What I'll do is once I've done this I'll get some clean fresh water and give it another rinse. If you are concerned about um, being very hygienic with it. Um, you can always put the pot into a big pan like this and boil it. And if you're boiling it um, in hot water for up to, you know, if you're boiling it for about 10 minutes, um, you, you're definitely going to kill any, the majority of bacteria. And to avoid it um, jumping up and clattering on the bottom of your pan as you do that, you can always put a tea towel or some piece of cloth at the very bottom of the pot. So that means it just um, cushions it as it as the bubbles push it up and down in the boiling water. Now I'm happy with that, I think, as being pretty clean. Bar some sand and some grit, that is now clean and ready to use again. And like I say, I'm, I probably will give it a boil before I put it away completely. But once I've got rid of that grit, that's it done. So it's, it's not particularly labour intensive to get them cleaned at all. 
and also make sure you dry them out that's the other thing once they've got wet you you don't want to sit them somewhere where they are going to stay damp because they could become moldy so you want to make sure that they're staying somewhere nice and dry um, so that you're not having any moisture sitting inside that pot at any time 